Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Change the Shed. It is June 14, 2023, and I'm happy you're here. Let's do some tapestry weaving. Uh, I'll be back again on June 28, which is two weeks from today. It's another Wednesday, and um, for more fun. Heaven only knows what we'll be doing in two weeks, but we'll be weaving something. Looks like y'all are coming in from all over Washington. Hilly's here from the Netherlands. Um, Susan's here from Pittsburgh, Arizona. Julia's here from Germany. More Pennsylvania, where I hear it is rainier. That's good. Um, I guess Lane is here from Abusan. Hooray, I saw your... Um, your newest face, uh, Gislaine, it's amazing. So, and there's a group of tapestry weavers headed your way. I'm sure you know about that. Um, I went on the tapestry tour in 2019, right before COVID with Chrissy Colette in France. And um, she is back at it this week. So I've been watching the social media posts from everybody who's on the trip this time, which is uh, just such a fun thing to go to France and see tapestry, so. Uh, Wheat Ridge, Janet's from right down the road. Um, Jessica's here from Illinois. And Victoria from California. And Christine from Texas. And Brenda also from Pennsylvania. We're getting a Pennsylvania day today. Um, rain is good, I guess. We have had so much rain here, I can't even believe it. It's crazy. We're under a flood watch, which doesn't surprise me. Although I was up in Estes Park this weekend and there was a car behind me with an inch of fresh snow on it. So Colorado. Uh, Renee from Massachusetts and Jan Janice from Oregon. Marlena's here from Texas. And um, Carolyn's here from the UK. Barbara from California. Donna's here from Virginia. Hooray. Hi, another Donna. Hello, Donna. Um, Rama's here from Indiana. Fantastic. Happy you're all tuning in. Um, I like summer for tapestry weaving and obviously also for hiking, but Carol's here from Bainbridge Island. Um, another beautiful place. So many places in the world. Um, oh, good. Ghislaine says she's they're coming to Abusan, and I knew you were on their tour um, because I have heard some excitement from all of them about the, the I know a handful of people on the tour, so some excitement about them visiting you in Abusan, Kislein, so can't wait to see pictures. Wish I was there. Totally wish I was there. Um, Carolyn, I would send you some rain if I could, because we have had um, more than our fair share this year. Just so happy that um, we probably won't have a big fire season again, so... Two years in a row of no big fire season is a big thing for the West. Um, at least Colorado, it's drier up north, so who knows. If you'd like to leave a donation for Change the Shed, um, this is a free program because of those of you who um, are able to throw a little money this way, and I appreciate it so much. I could not do this every two weeks without um, those of you who so consistently support it, so I really appreciate it. If you want to support the program um, with a donation, just go to tapestryweaving.com, that's my website, and look under online learning for Change the Shed, or there's a link below this video. Um, and Summer of Tapestries in Full Swing, so this is one of my very favorite classes, and some of you who are here today are in that class, and we're having a lot of fun, so it's not too late to join if you would like to. The second prompt goes up on Friday. So that's an online class that goes for about six weeks in the summer. And then the only other announcement I have is that the Tapestry Discovery Box drops on July 15. So um, if you want to sign up, if you haven't been getting the Tapestry Discovery Box, which is a course plus yarn through just, um, just yarn, it um, 
every three months there's a new little piece of the course and you get another set of yarn. So it's been really fun. This will be the third box in July. And um, if you sign up today, you'll still get the box from April. So if you want to get that box, which was about color gradation, you can still get that one. Um, it does say on the website, I think at least yesterday, out of stock. That just means there's one color that they're waiting for from the mill, but they're supposed to get it soon. So um, sign up for that waitlist button that they have. If you sign up July 1st or later, you will get the July box. So if you want the April box, you need to sign up before the end of June. Hope that's clear. Anyway, it's a lot of fun. And the next box is about um, which way to weave a tapestry design as part of the thing we're going to be working on. Do you weave it this way or do you, do you weave your cartoon this way or do you turn it this way to weave it? It's a great design question. Um, Oh, great, Michelle, thanks. Michelle says she's having a blast with um, Summer of Tapestry. I'm having a blast too. And today we're working on a piece for that class. Uh, I am working on a piece that should have been done by now, but oh, whatever. Part of the thing about that class is that there's no rules and you're doing something to help your own progression and mind and have fun this summer. So it's not about rules and deadlines. All right, I can't think of one other announcement um, that I need to make. So let's do some weaving, right? Oh, I had so much fun. You all probably don't wanna know this, but here, this is what I did last week. I went to a spinning class at Estes Park Wool Market, one of my favorite events ever. This is Maggie Casey, and I went to her spinning class called A Fleece Followed Me Home. And this is all fleece on the floor, and it was fantastic. Um, I had so much fun. And then went to the market where I saw Amy Wolf, amazing um, fleece judge. So I sat there for two days, most of two days, on plastic folding chairs, um, listening to Amy talk about fleece. So she's a... Uh, um, producer herself. She's a shearer and she also is a fiber artist. So she knows what she's talking about in terms of what to look for in a fleece. So that led me to this. I came home with four fleeces. Um, I intended to come home with one fleece and I ended up with a few extras. Um, so I think the house will smell like sheep for a while because I need to wash them all. The other magic thing that I found in, and actually I have it right here. Um, uh, some friends of mine actually in Fort Collins, or people that I have met, fiber people in Fort Collins, um, are now making these tapestry forks. And I was so excited, I was jumping up and down. Um, so that was a really fun find, and I will let you know where to get those. Very cool. Um, all right, that was my weekend. Uh, lots of fleece and the Estes Park wool market. Fleece is so great. It's the, it's what we, you know, wool is what most of us use for our main material and it is amazing to learn how it all works. So the whole industry, how different um, fleeces make the kind of yarn that you want and just being able to make your own yarn is really fun. All right, let's look at, guess what? This is what I'm weaving today. <laughs> this should have been done by now, but it is not. So it's all right. Let me make this smaller. Um, all right, so this is the bird tapestry. Um, I am, if you didn't see the last time I worked on this, it is a little tapestry about the birds in my backyard. This has to do with prompt one from Summer of Tapestry. And um, I am weaving a little bit of the colors of each of the birds that came to my backyard over. I was over a week except their birds I added that I really enjoyed that didn't come in the same week. So I've had a lot of fun weaving this. It um, is super busy and uh, I may redesign this idea and do something 
um, a little less busy, but this has been amazingly fun to weave. And it is also um, just sort of a tapestry diary kind of thing. Memories of watching the birds come. So I am right now working on, this is a robin. So this little area, this color's not quite right. I had a lot of trouble finding the right color for the robin. I think robins are a little bit less, um, a little rustier. The American robin is not quite this orange, but that's okay. Donna says, more power to you. I will stick with buying yarn. I totally get it. It is um, such a rabbit hole, the fleece thing. Um, it's all Maggie Casey's fault. If you don't know Maggie, she used to own, or she still does own, Shuttles, Spindles and Skeins, which is a um, yarn shop in Boulder, which closed in 2020 just because she and her business partner retired. But... Um, I really miss it. They had a lot of weaving stuff at that shop and I used to go there to spin. But anyway, Maggie taught me to weave and the whole fleece thing is her fault because she really likes to teach her students to start with a fleece, I think, so you understand the whole process and also fleece is super addicting. So um, I blame it on her, my new found love of stinky sheep fleeces. They smell great but that might be an acquired taste. Um, so anyway, I understand Donna, you saying, <laughs> I'll stick with yarn. It's okay, it's a good choice. There's so much beautiful yarn out there, like this array that I'm using. I've really enjoyed using this yarn. I um, just think it's, um, it has just enough, enough grip for me. Like it's just fuzzy enough that it stays together. It has such a nice surface. Comes in such great colors. Really enjoyed it. Okay, I'm making a curve here that I'm gonna outline. Those of you who watch this a lot have seen me do this sort of outline frequently. Um, Kind of wanted to do some little hatching here just because the, you know, feathers on the bird are sort of black and gray. This is a robin. Um, I mean, robins mostly, I think their heads are kind of black and their feathers are more gray, but we're just gonna go with it. Welcome, Ellen. First time watching live. Awesome. Thanks for coming. Um, those of you who are new, I actually never, <laughs> I don't think, I, it doesn't occur to me to say this, but um, if you're new here, I started this, um, changed the shed during the pandemic, obviously. Um, you know, back in the days, the heavy days of the pandemic when we didn't know what was going on and we weren't going anywhere. Um, and I started, when I started doing it, it was every single day. And it didn't take too long before I realized that I've scummered myself out real fast. So um, now we're down to once every other week and that has worked out really well. The idea just being that we have a little time to talk about weaving, tapestry weaving specifically, and uh, chat, it would be really nice if all of you were um, if we could all be in the same room, but this is the second best thing because we have people from all over the world and it's really, um, really fun to have everybody in the same virtual space every now and then. Um, Marla, I do not know. Marla asked, do you know how to tell the male Robin from the female? I do not. So tell me. Um, hi, Karen. Glad you made it. Um, B asked, what kind of thread? This is... Just array, 
Um, it is just as GIST. It's a company in the United States that sources all their fleece from U.S. Um, sheep growers, and um, they mill and dye the yarn in the United States. So really like this tapestry yarn. It came out in 2021. Am I right about that? It's only been out a couple years. Comes in lots of colors, and they are continuing to produce more colors, which is fantastic for tapestry weaving. I think they have 170 colors now or something. I could be wrong. It's a lot. There's a lot of colors. And... I'm quite sure they will have even more as um, people request ones that they want. So it's wool. Um, awesome, okay, let's see. So now I wanna check my shed here. I did this in meet and separate, so this shed is all good. Looks like I can do my outline because that shed is all fine. I wanna outline it to here. I'm using this green for an outline. This is, for those of you who use array, this is meadow. This is two is the darkness level. This is an eccentric outline, meaning it is not perpendicular to the warp. Ah, oh, thanks, Mary. A wing stack. I like it. <laughs> A colored wing stack. Let's see. Did I get? Let's see. I don't have that last um, black color up there. I need to put that in. Go to here. Hope you all have some weaving plans this summer. I like weaving in the summer. I like weaving in the winter too, but um, not everybody is a summer weaver. But I like to I like to go camping and bring looms along and sit in the woods. You might have guessed that about me. There, there's our robin. Um, all right, let's add, this is black two, which is a sort of charcoal gray. Let's just add the stripe of this. I am, um, I love watching the birds. I'm learning more about them. Ellen says that she thinks the um, male robins are more vibrant red and the females have red tinges but are more brown. And that seems to ring true in terms of other birds too. I mean, that seems pretty usual. We're gonna put um, another gold finch in here, but I have to weave this part first. And I want to finish that, but I want to hook that into the weaving of the goldfinch. So, of course, in tapestry, you have to weave from the bottom to the top. So I can't quite finish that until I get into the goldfinch part. So I have to weave this first and this. And this little spot is going to be my lazuli bunting, which um, is one of my favorite ones. Uh, if you're in Summer of Tapestry, you saw that I did a whole separate tapestry about um, the lazuli bunting or lazuli bunting. I'm not sure how to say it. Um, this is not 8 EPI, Michelle. I am reasonably sure it's 10. I'm only using two strands of array, and I wanted a little more detail than... Yeah, it's 10. About 10. It's close to 10, maybe even a little closer than that. So um, I'm only using two strands of array because it's closer set. It's not 8 EPI. Welcome, Paula. Glad you're here from the UK. 
Okay, the lazuli bunting is going to be, um, I've made notes for myself too of what colors. I've got a natural and a weaver's, this is a weaver's bazaar color because I didn't have something like that in the, I don't have a color like that in the array at the moment. Black two is this one. And I'm gonna use this blue for the lazuli bunting. It's just a little closer than, here was the, that's pretty close. I could have used this array, um, the sapphire. Those two are quite close. And let's see. Sorry, I um fawn. What did I want this color for? This might be for a different. <laughs> Hold on. Stone. Okay. I'm gonna mix these two for the this is stone and orange for the sort of breast of the bird is a little bit brown and fawn. Okay, and the blue. Let's, the bird has a lot of blue on it, fortunately. Let's start with um, a little bit of natural because there's also white, not quite white. Some birds are white, white, white. I guess, hmm, now that I'm thinking about it, hold on. Oh, Marla says the head of the male robin is black and the female's head is blue. Okay, well the picture I have then is a male robin. Um, let me just find you the picture of the... Okay, so let's see if you can see this. Here's the lazuli bunting. That is pretty white. Maybe I'll use white white instead of the natural and then I'm actually gonna mix these two for that breast color. Mm, I don't know, we'll see. And then the um, blue, there's a little bit of black there and then sort of gray in the wings. All right, I'm gonna go with the white instead of the natural. So here's the difference. Here's the white and there's the natural. They're pretty close. The um, natural's just a little yellower. I don't know if they call it a reluctant birder. I always laugh at the memes about how when I retire, I'm gonna be a birder. And I'm like, well, I'm not retired, but <laughs> the older you get, the more interesting birds are maybe. I don't know. There's plenty of young people who like birds too, but um, they're just fascinating. And I live right on the edge of the Rocky Mountains in Fort Collins, Colorado. And I think I should ask a bird person about this, but we get, in the spring, we just get a lot of different birds um, migrating through. And so, and I live right on the edge of town and I get even more birds than people who live a couple miles further east. Bird chat says Sarah. Welcome, Sarah. Sarah from Idaho. Um, oh, Rama asked, that's a great question. Um, I'm not, the summer of tapestry class is not, I'm not telling people what to weave. Most people aren't weaving a bird tapestry. It's not an assignment. This is my choice of, the prompt is about something else. So in Summer of Tapestry, I give a prompt and um, you do whatever you want that fits your life. Um, I wanted to weave about birds, but most people are not weaving about birds. So I have lots and lots of colors, so I can have lots of things to pick from because I teach. So I've collected yarns because I bring them to workshops and um, people use them. So, um, but Rama wants to know how many yarns folks are um, buying to do the bird tapestry and most people are not doing a bird tapestry. Um, you just need colors that um, 
you know, limitation. If you don't have a lot of colors, it's fine. It doesn't matter. Um, sometimes when I go backpacking, I only have, you know, a handful of colors. I am not liking this with two butterflies. Am I going to like this? Hold on, I have to think about the technique a minute. Um, or is it going to tick me off? Um, oh, let's just see. Let's just go with it for a minute, see what happens. Um, so limitations can be super helpful. Um, if you only have a few colors of something, you will learn to substitute, you will learn to use weft bundling, you will learn to use what you have, or you will learn to make yarn, or you will learn other ways of finding materials that work for what you want to do. Um, that's gonna be a lot of white. Weaver's Bazaar is a little bit shinier and a little bit thinner than Array. But I'm gonna use it for this anyway. Uh, that's a good, um, a good, um, Deb says, uh, we sell so much bird food at the hardware store. I love asking people what birds they're seeing. That's a good icebreaker, right? What birds are you seeing? I'm going to leave the blue. Maybe I'll go with three strands. The Weaver's Bazaar's fine is a lot thinner than the array. I do. Carol asked if I have the Merlin app for birds, which I do. And I just added a couple, a couple new apps that I didn't know about. Um, eBird, I think, is one of them. It, uh, tracks your life list or whatever. And there's another one I just added to it, the Audubon app, I think. They're all free, and so they're a lot of fun. That picture I showed was from uh, the Merlin app, I'm pretty sure. Yes, good point, Janet says, um, in semi-precious gems, a beautiful blue stone is a lapis lazuli. I, um, gonna try to do a little bit of hatching here. I think I will probably be happier if I had done this with just one butterfly of each color. I wanted to try to do this. Hatching. I wanted to try to do hatching in a very small space. <laughs> Every art form has their expense. Um, there are less expensive ways to find tapestry yarns, and I do talk about that in some of my online classes, but you know, um, Patternayan is a 
pattern name it's now made it's called colonial persian now it's made by Con colonial needlework same yarn um you can find on ebay so often you have to be a little careful that you don't buy someone's stash that's you know had moths or something or a smoker in the house or something like that but you can sometimes find lots of pattern in for not very much money it comes in little hanks usually i mean it's also been sold in larger put ups but um, that's one inexpensive way to get lots of colors um, appleton cruel is another um, needlepoint yarn that you might be able to find on ebay and then making a copper pipe loom like this is a copper pipe loom that i made um, you can make one of these for, if you have to buy the copper cutting tool, it might max out at 30 bucks. And then after that, each loom will be even cheaper. So it doesn't have to be expensive. I know we always want lots and lots of colors, but it's not mandatory. You can make really beautiful things with just a few colors. Um, Chester asked about the colors for the next Tapestry Discovery Box. If you're in the Tapestry Discovery Box, the colors have been posted for a couple weeks now. So just go to the current... Um, Current box, which is about color gradation, and there's a step. Is it in there? I think it's in at the, if you go all the way down to the bottom, I think the next um, step is, anyway, it's in the box. Just go and look at the steps in the box and you'll find the next colors are in there. Um, okay, let's add. Some of that chest color. These little spot spaces are so small. Finding that I maybe would like more room. I think three Weaver's Bazaar is just a tiny bit thicker than two of the array, which is interesting. Um, that's a hill thread, so let's do this. That's a valley, so I'll double that one. And then I just said I'd double that. Did double it. Okay. Let's. Uh, Try this. Where's my list? Um, orange one and stone mixed. Let's try this. So often I, if I'm mixing colors, I will do a little finger skein. That is toning down the pink of this with the brown of this other color. The question is, because this is thinner, what is my proportion? Let's just try two strands and see. Oh, Rama, so I was going to say that. Um, you were asking about colors. Dyeing your own, if you dye cotton, it's not a huge step to learn to dye wool. I actually think dyeing cotton is harder. So you might consider dyeing your own yarn, in which case I recommend dyeing the yarn that I use for my big tapestries, which is Harrisville Kohler Singles. It's a singles yarn. It's really nice and it is Certainly the least expensive option you'll get in an undyed tapestry yarn. 
Oh, I'm just not going to like that thickness problem. The weft bundle is not the same. It's not close enough. So I'm going to add another strand. Hello, Donna. Thank you. Glad you like hanging out. Hi, Vincent from Berlin. And oh yeah, B said um, they found a, a lap loom at a thrift store and have to figure out how to get started. Awesome. Well, you're in the right place. And the internet is powerful, so poke around and watch Change the Shed and if you want an online class, I have lots of those. I'm going to wish this had more pink in it, but we're just going to go with it. As you've noticed, I have not planned these forms at all. Just doing it on the fly. And I'm just realizing as I weave that how much that's going to stick out. Look at that. Compared to the rest of the birds, how much that white is going to just stand right out in the center of that tapestry. Instead of it being more blue, it is um, super white. So what could I do about that? I could have a different, you know, I'll add a lighter color of blue. Oh, I might even have, I bet I have an even lighter color of this sapphire. Um, so I also like how the brown and the blue are mixed right there. So I might play with that some. Oh, that's great. Rama, so use cotton for, um, she says, I don't use animal fiber. So use cotton for your tapestry. You can dye all the colors of cotton. And I don't have a good, I mean, I don't have a good recommendation for base cotton, although um, I've seen lots of people and I have used pearl cotton for tapestry. So yeah, dye your own cotton. There's no reason you can't use cotton. Silk, um, I don't know if you use silk. Um, silk is also another great option, but I don't, some people consider silk an animal fiber, which is understandable since it is a little insect that makes it. Fun times. Yeah. Dyers. I'll be doing some dyeing this summer. All that fleece I bought, some of that's getting dyed. And those of you in the dye class, can't wait to see what you're working on. Let's do one more. All right, I have lost track of time completely. Yeah, I don't know if uh, that made sense what I said about value, but value is really important. And I, I suspect that when you see this again, I will have taken this particular bird out and redone it with more blue and less white because I, um, or I might go back to the natural that might help too over the You just don't know until you get more. Like if I had, if I could see forward to the rest of the piece, which is going to be, let's see, the goldfinch has a lot of yellow, so that's lighter. The house finch has some pink. Um, then there's a chickadee, which is black and white, and I don't know what I'm going to put there. And then a mountain bluebird, which is also blue. So I'll have to differentiate those. Oh, I might move those around. I might put the mountain bluebird somewhere else so that I don't have the two blues next to each other. Anyway, the white really stands out to me. And when I see, I like the little pieces of white in there, but this might be too much. So just a value thing. I don't know. I'll have to think about it as I look a little bit more at it. 
I'll just say at this moment, I am not loving it. Um, that needs to come back first. I do like this um, light orange. This is actually orange one from Weaver's Bazaar. That mix is looking pretty good because the values are similar. It looks good to me in person, you know, up close. See, I haven't put any of that black in there either. Oh, Ghislaine is going to die with cochineal. Oh, I have to find some friends to do some natural dyeing with. Cochineal is beautiful. Have fun with that. Um, I've done a little bit of natural dyeing always with people who know more about what they're doing. I will admit that the dyes I use are honestly quite simple. Um, Acid wool dyeing is uh, not a difficult procedure. Oh, let's see, I have three strands here. Let's do this. Compared to natural dye, you have to know a lot more with natural dyeing. It's not as um, consistent either, but you get a lot of beautiful results. Dying fiber with friends is like kindergarten. I like it, Anne. Yep. That should be how we spend our summers. Okay, maybe it's not as bad as I think. It might be all right, but um, yes. Um, Ellen said, what if you mix the bright white with the cream? I think that would help. I think the bright white um, was maybe not my best impulse there. And just a lot of it for a real tiny, tiny tapestry. Hmm, not sure yet. Let's tuck these back and then we'll think about it a little bit. It might be okay. I wanted more blue, but I don't know. Uh, I'll let you know how it goes. I'd like to get this tapestry finished. Um, soon. Um, but whatever. I mean, it's not like it's on a deadline. Awesome. Thank you all for coming. It's been really fun hanging out and weaving. And I hope you're weaving something this summer or this week or this winter. If you're in the Southern Hemisphere, most of you down there don't see this live because it is the middle of the night for you. But I appreciate those of you who watch the replay. And there are a lot of tapestry weavers in the Southern Hemisphere, a lot of them in Australia especially. But um, yeah, it is winter there. So all of my summer talk is not quite the same. All right, everybody, thank you so much for coming to change the shed and um, yeah, let's just see what happens next time on June 28th. In the meantime, if you want to use this hashtag, um, it's really fun to see what everybody's weaving, um, change the shed, and um, just a lot of fun. Um, oh, Janice, that's a really good question. Janice um, asked, what's your opinion about using natural dyes for tapestry yarn? Are there worries about it maintaining color over time? Are there problems when you steam it for finishing, et cetera? Well, I know some very amazing tapestry weavers who use natural dyes. I think that Sarah Sweat, who is here or was, is one of them. I think most of her 
dyes lately at least have been natural dyes and uh, Michael Rohde is another one who does all natural dyeing. Their tapestries don't run, um, but they're, I'm sure, very careful with their formulation. I mean, I think that natural dyes can be just as um, sound, at, sound, light fast and color fast as synthetic dyes. I think that um, there are different ways of making natural dyes more um, eco-friendly. A lot of them are very eco-friendly and a lot of them when you start using mordants that are sort of toxic are not as friendly to humans. Um, but you can dye so many colors just using like alum as your mordant. And so, um, yeah, I don't, I think natural dyes are gorgeous and really can be amazing. Some of them are fugitive. So like one of my favorite natural dye colors is logwood, but it's a very fugitive dye. So say you weave a tapestry using a lot of logwood and you hang it on the wall, you might find in a year or two that all of that purple color has turned to something else. So fugitive nature of some natural dyes, many natural dyes is important to pay attention to for tapestry because if you're dyeing like a sweater or something, that is going to live in your closet and be in the dark for a lot of the time. You're just going to take it out and wear it now and then and put it back in the dark. But a tapestry that's hanging on the wall will be exposed to light for, you know, 16 hours a day or something, depending on where you live. And so that um, can mean that it fades. It can mean that it fades with some synthetic dyes. All synthetic dyes are not created equal. And obviously I could talk about dyeing for a long time. Um, have strong opinions about which synthetic dyes are the best and I don't know enough about natural dyes so there are a lot of people out there who do know those so definitely ask them about that for tapestry. Ooh, turquoise to the blue that's a good idea Marla I'll think about that for my bird instead of just the bright sapphire blue maybe some turquoise I like it. Um, thanks for coming Alan. Um, ooh, Stacy made the copper pie bloom awesome Love the copper pie blooms. They're addictive. They're like potato chips. Seriously, once you've made a couple and you're more comfortable with however you're affixing the corners, whether you're gluing them, uh, using epoxy, or um, soldering them, you'll just keep making them. Very fun. All right. Thanks, everybody. We will... Um... Oh, Sarah, I'll just say this. Sarah said... Um... Just we're talking about natural dyes. It depends on the natural dyes that you choose. She sticks with ancient dyes and she uses five of them, but she's used them for all her work for 30 years. So there's your answer right there, Janice. If you make good choices, um, the natural dyes are great. Oh, and she even tells you what they are. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Indigo, cochineal, madder, weld, and walnut are her best friends, all done with alum. So she's not using... Um, tin or chrome or something. Um, some change might happen, but care is important with dye and rinsing. Awesome. Thank you, Sarah. So great to hear. So great to hear. Um, cool. That's, that's a whole nother rabbit hole. We should jump down sometime. <laughs> Maybe um, we can pick the brain of those fantastic um, tapestry weavers who use natural dyes. That would be fun. All right, y'all. I'll see you in a couple weeks. Um, in the meantime, have a great summer weaving and whatever. Maybe I'll see you in summer of tapestry and um, otherwise I'll see you here in a couple weeks. Have a good one. Bye-bye.